now we have the movie that I like was interested in because of who made it yeah. and then slowly and little by little just became like a chore to watch mm-hmm. watch because I, I feel like ever since the LA Times found a uh, really great success with that Flamin' Hot Cheetos thing they have come out and have decided to to belittle anybody if they didn't cross their T's dot their I's and like I don't even know what to think anymore because it's like this is a movie about a woman's story who at 60 years old after attempting it so many times decides to swim for 60 something hours right mm-hmm. from the coast of Florida to Cuba other way with pe- oh she goes from Cuba to Florida yeah sorry and in doing so she's got people next to her and the idea is that they can't assist her in any way shape or form except for her sister her with food and drink and right, right and exactly at that point i'm like wait wait so you guys have a problem with that but not everything else i don't know i, I read the article it like everything that stood out to me was weird for sure but like yeah. it did not stop the fact that this is still a 60 year old woman swimming across um, right i don't know it's weird because like there's certainly like obviously undeniably impressive aspects of her story uh yeah. but if you want to go to naiadfactcheck.com there are people who have dedicated a lot of time it looks like gotta, into trying to this. uh trying to debunk different aspects of her story da- not just in terms of her swims but like in terms of her personal life everything yeah like going going through like her her claims of assault and stuff like that and trying to deny it so i don't know how, how verifiable all of the fact check stuff is uh i was moving stuff in the notion mm -hmm. and i literally went to go get something that terrible pot of coffee that i made the first time around and i come back and i see you typing niadfactcheck.com that's what i was going to add i burst out laughing so just so you know (laughs) i found the same thing too and i think that's crazy that someone's paying for a domain right like it it might say something if somebody is going to the link of paying for a domain just to like counter the things that you've said that's also haters out there. Yeah, well, I mean, look, that I it's hard to know where the truth lies and in in cases like this, I often uh believe that it's probably somewhere in the middle, right? Mm-hmm. Um and you know, I think it's hard to also ask us the the audience to be the litigators of the truthfulness of stuff like this, right? Like Yeah. Ultimately, this is being consumed as a piece of entertainment right and maybe the entertainment feels a little bit more hollow if you know that you're being manipulated or lied to but i also feel i also feel like the i don't know i don't know if i agree with that but yeah (laughs) um i i I think it's they're both naiad and john wilson are after very different things but i think it's also that like naiad doesn't really work the same way if like it's not being truthful about the circumstances because the circumstances are part of what's effective about it if that makes any sense oh, i agree um i think and we'll get into like breaking down the movie itself because like you were saying it's supposed to have some awards buzz and you could still judge a movie your woman king was another example from a couple right. of years ago where it's like uh people were really upset that they weren't showing them as like terrible people but it's like they, they kind of got into that subplot but nonetheless, they were trying to look at them as like from their perspective. And we get this from, you know, mobster movies to Killers of the Flower Moon is another one that's been getting backlash for being too much on on the killer's side. Perspective, um, yeah. Yeah, for Nyad, I know that right off the bat when they were talking about the movie, they had already mentioned that they lied about a shark attack that was in there. More so because they wanted to showcase what the protocols would have been if a shark would have attacked her. But a shark right. never attacked her. And... Yeah, you know, when I was reading up on NyadFactCheck.com and several other sources, there was, like, people calling her out because of uh, her having a photograph where she was, like, being helped up. And they're like, this is proof. And then someone came in and said, well, she's wearing a completely different outfit. And they were like, so what? And it's like, well, yeah, like, if you want her to be truthful, then the people also wanting to tear her down, y'all got to be truthful, too, if you're fighting for mm-hmm. the truth. And, and, yeah, that's where things get very sticky with it. But movie-wise. Movie-wise. What did you think of their performances? I thought they were fine. I thought it was very kind of like traditional Hollywood biopic acting. You know, it's it's a bit of a departure from the Annette Bening that I think maybe we're more used to. She has like a very gruff demeanor. 
Uh, she's obviously doing a lot of the swimming herself, so it's a bit of a physical role for her as well. Um, and Jodie, uh, Jodie Foster maybe is a little bit more in a mode that we're used to seeing her in, but mm -hmm. I don't know. They're like, it's kind of just a film where they have a very, um, chartable car character arc, right? Like, you know, it's leading to a, a monologue deep in the second act. That's going to be them like really, uh, growing as a person over the course of, you know, 30 yeah. seconds of dialogue. It, it, I, I just felt like maybe because the film itself doesn't really stray too far from, uh, you know, traditional biopic territory that I, I wasn't too moved by their performances either, even though I found them both effective. Yeah. Th there was a certain point early on when they're arguing with each other and they'll just be talking and someone will be like, did you forget the stuff from Petco? And then they have to grab the Petco bag and put it like that. Or she's drinking diet Coke that I'm like, ah, okay. A lot of this is kind of being compromised for the big feature film that they wanted to make. And um, I think it's an interesting way to showcase it because of the director's background um, we should I, mention however, it's uh, uh, Elizabeth Vassar Helly and Jimmy Chin, who I just wish are the they, documentarians they, yeah. who made Free Solo and other documentaries we like, but it's their feature film debut, narrative. Might as debut, well have just rather. made it another documentary, if we're being honest with you. Yeah. I think that the way that they're able to approach their documentaries, I think, does it in a much better way. Uh, there were moments, you know, knowing about all of the behind the scenes and about, about how it may have been a lie. Where you start listening to some of the lines that she says uh, in yeah. the movie and even in interviews, I just want the honesty. And I'm like, I don't know, maybe you guys are pretty good feature film directors and you were kind of getting aspects of right. it out of Well, the, the epilogue ends and there, it, the epilogue starts rather and it's like, 30 people witnessed her journey it's like oh you're trying to make sure that we know that there's uh yeah people who can fact check this okay um i don't know right I mean, because I they show you with one boat but the end credits do say there were several boats and i'm like so then why don't you show that in the movie because that's what you're being called right. out for exactly uh, i in my letterbox review i called it perseverance porn or the everest of the water like everest to me is kind of the the movie to compare it to because it's less so less about like the journey of the character, even though the character does show some growth by the end, mm -hmm. then it is just like spending the time in the elements, witnessing uh, the adversity of the protagonist, right? Like rather than yeah. uh, extreme cold and blizzards, blizzards, it's also extreme cold and the dead of night and sharks and box jellyfish, jellyfish. you know, like it's, it's it's just about like how many obstacles can nature throw at her way yeah. and Annette Benning will just sort of half deliriously say, I'm going to stay swimming or whatever. With her, with her big lips like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, like everything had just been sucked out of her. There were some really interesting night shots. I will give them that when they yeah. kind of showcased how you follow her through the night. There's like, it almost looked like a jellyfish itself, that red glow that they put in mm -hmm. the, in the water. She would also have these moments where while she's swimming, they put you into her headspace where she recalls a lot of stuff from her youth be it her stepfather who explained to her that you could go all the way to Cuba, you know, like it's, it's swimming distance. Um, yeah. But there's one through line also about like her swimming teacher and like what she had to persevere there. And it's, you know, I, I thought that was really well written and performed by her in, in the sense that like she's overcoming a past trauma. And if she could overcome that, what is this swimming 60 hours? I was like, all right, you guys have a pocket here that that does really work um, and could have stood out. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I think that Covering this as a documentary might have been a little bit better. I think there's only so far you can get in a movie like this where, yeah, comparing it to Everest or a lot of other movies, um, oh, yeah, it, it, you're, you're just seeing them kind of go through the trauma there. There was yeah. one moment, though, where she's, like, doing practice, and they put a filter on her flashbacks or her memories. Mm -hmm. I thought that at first my TV went wonky because it's imitating what it looks like when when the wa when the light goes through the water right then yeah. i thought i was full on having a stroke <laughs> and it took me a while because it then comes back to 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 the normal time that i was like oh okay it's an effect bro i got so scared i didn't even know what was going on <laughs> had to like but, check your glasses or whatever yeah i was hoping i wasn't smelling burnt toast but <laughs> yeah I, had, I i don't hate it um, but I think they make much better documentaries. I think that really gets into the truth of it. And I yeah. think when you compromise the truth with a movie like Nyad and a movie like, um, what was it, the other LA Times? Uh, uh, Flaming Hot. Flaming Hot. That you can like the story of her and her partners here in Nyad, and you can also love the, the love story in Hot Cheetos. But you can't deny that a big thing that's up in the forefront is that the, the, the truth of them making it up. 
exactly you know, fr- from the bottom up. And uh, yeah, that, that can kind of compromise the story a lot. You know, last week we previewed this movie a little bit, and I mentioned that uh, Jeff Snyder uh, was saying that this is a potential best picture contender, and we were joking a little bit because he is somebody who is known to throw out some crazy uh, proclamations here or there. But I do think there's something to be said about this being kind of a potential middle of the road choice. We talked about Coda earlier this year, just like a a easy, satisfying kind of movie that I don't know if I want to count it out of the Oscars discussion right now, but I do think I would be surprised if it got literally any nominations. No, you got Rustin coming up right around the corner. Like why would that's another Netflix movie that's also based on a true story and that's not getting fact checked like that. Go for that. You have way more options. So I, I, I agree with you. And I would say that if for whatever reason it pops up, it deserves even more hate than at that point because, no. I, I was reading up the World Guinness Records. The, they re- revoked her thing. The the Swimming wow. Association of Florida revoked her thing. Like That's hey, pretty she's, damning. She's still she's still swimming uphill. Let's just put it that way. But not yet. Yeah. It is out on Netflix. Probably the best way to watch it. Um, if you were curious on the story, not a bad movie, but probably a compromised uh, backstory when it comes to what she did. 